This uh, morning, uh, the, uh, we have a uh, short video that we want to share with you. But if you guys are uh, ready back there, we'll see if we can uh, um, get this uh, the video to play. So just whenever you're ready back there, you can start in. We often talk about Celebrate Recovery being for anybody who struggles with a hurt, hang up or have it. So whether you're somebody who was hurt as a child and you're still dealing with those issues or you've got people pleasing hang ups and things that keep you stuck in relationships or you're addicted to something, food, sex, alcohol, whatever it is, that Celebrate Recovery is really for anybody. In fact, that's the truth. Celebrate Recovery is for all of us because we've all been hurt and we've all hurt other people. We've all got things in our lives that keep us stuck and keep us frozen, things we wish we didn't deal with. And for many of us, we have these addiction issues that also just rob us of any joy or peace that we have in our life. The thing about Celebrate Recovery is that it's a biblical program and it's got eight principles that lead us from one place to the next place over one day at a time after one day at a time. So we begin where we realize that we're not God. We come out of denial. We face our fears. We face the problems that have keeping us stuck. We turn our lives over to Jesus. We do things like taking a moral inventory of our lives and we look at all the things that we've done have been done to us to help us come out of that. We talk to other people about what's happening. Then at the end, we serve other people because we believe that God uses our pain so that we can help other people when they go through pain. And so what we really wanna do is just tell you about this ministry, this place where you can come and you can find healing no matter what's going on in your life. We have some people that have gone through Celebrate Recovery for years that have dealt with issues like anxiety. And they wake up every morning in a cold sweat and they just look at their day and they think, how am I gonna get through today? By working the principles and steps of recovery, they're able to find day by day freedom over that issue. We have other people who are severely depressed and they also need to find a way out. There's people like me who struggle with anxiety and am a recovering alcoholic. And I know that when I'm hurting, I medicate. Now, I haven't medicated with alcohol for over a decade, but I can find anything, whether it's working out or whether it's you know, spending money or anything, just give it to me and I will overdo it. And so we find that we've got these issues and what we need to do is we come clean about it. We talk to each other about it. We talk to God about it. We allow him to work in our lives and to find the thing that's really causing us pain. You know, the reality of it is, is that whatever we're doing tends to be a symptom. We think I need to come to recovery because I drink too much or I'm online too much or I spend too much money. And while that's true, we need to get out that simple behavior. We need to root it out. The truth is, is that often the reason we're doing those things are buried deeper inside of us. And so that's what recovery allows us to do. It allows us to find that, that pain that's in our lives, that's keeping us frozen, keeping us stuck. You know, the apostle Paul said that he had become all things to all men so that by all possible means, he may save some. Anything to get the job done. You know, I've watched a lot of ministries come and go through the churches over the years, but the one that stands out in my mind, more than any of them, is called Celebrate Recovery. It gives hope to the hopeless. It's hard work. It takes a lot of dedication, long hours, sitting down with your neighbor that bad times have fallen upon him. Most of the time brought upon him by himself with the help of the evil one. But the guys and gals with Celebrate Recovery and I've traveled from one end of these United States to the other. They have done a terrific job. When I go to a church, speak, and I know that there's a Celebrate Recovery there, it makes me happy, happy, happy <laughs> to be there. I'm Phil Robertson with Duck Dynasty, and I'm behind this Celebrate Recovery. Good work. God's with you. So am I. Hi, my name is Mallory. I'm a grateful believer and I struggle with drug addiction. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm a grateful believer. I struggle with sexual addiction and pot. Hi, my name is Rick. I'm a grateful believer and I struggle with medicating my feelings through food and through drugs. 
Hi, my name is Carol. I'm a believer who struggles with control. I'm Eloise. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I struggle with love and relationship addiction and codependency in relationship with a sexually addicted man. My name is Brad. I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I'm in recovery from an addiction to alcohol and cocaine. Hi, my name is Alan. I'm a believer who struggles with uh, approval seeking and uh, sexual addiction. I'm uh, Greg. I'm a grateful believer. I'm struggling with uh, relationship addiction. The first time I came to Celebrate Recovery, I so didn't want to be here. I knew I had a problem. I had hit a blow in my life, but my pattern has always been to run away and to hide from my problems. They were sharing all the things that I had been using alcohol to cover up my whole life. <laughs> I ran into a lot of finger pointing and judgment uh, in my life. When I finally came to Celebrate Recovery, I realized that this was a safe place and I wasn't going to be uh, subject to that here. First time I came to Celebrate Recovery, I wanted to puke. I was just so afraid, so nervous, so concerned that I would be judged. I was really just trying to convince my wife to stay with me. I felt that I was naked, that everyone could see my scars and see my hurts and see my stuff, and I didn't let anybody see that stuff. My whole life was fear. I mean, I smoked pot every day to not deal with my emotional pain. I remember sitting in the circle, I was suicidal and depressed and I didn't want to be there, and, but I also was so scared that I knew that I needed to do something different. I was ashamed of the things I, was, I had done. I was fearful of what others were going to think for the first time in my life. I knew that others were going to know the man that I had been. I was so afraid that uh, I was going to lose my marriage and, and uh, I knew I had to be here at Celebrate Recovery. I am flawed, ultimately, but I am, uh, I don't have to be stuck. Well, the big difference is I get to be me again, you know? I no longer have to, you know, uh, fake it, drinking during the week and then going to church on Sundays, I mean, because that's really what I was doing. I can talk about what I want, what I need, and what I feel without having to control and manage everything around me. I don't let my life lead me, I lead my life. God loves me the way that I am, but he loves me too much to let me stay where I'm at. I don't try to fix people anymore. I don't um, play God. I used to love playing God, and I really thought I was good at it, but it doesn't work. I lived a lot of my life in a lie, and now I was like living in truth. What I'd love to tell a newcomer is try it for six weeks. That's what I do. There are people here that love me the way I was. And they promised if I didn't like it, they'd give me my misery back. Jump in, your freedom is waiting on the other side. Sitting in these chairs in our circles is life changing. I've never ever come here and wish that I wouldn't have come. But every time that I come, something touches my life and changes me. I came here because I had to. I stay here because I couldn't imagine my life without celebrating. Y'all can, oh, there we go. <laughs> Hi, my name is Deanna, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who struggles with codependency, perfectionism, people pleasing, and food issues. I know that um, probably what most people think of when they hear recovery is drugs and alcohol. But Celebrate Recovery is not just about drugs and alcohol. I'm so excited, and those of you that I, have been around a little bit know that I'm a crier, so I'll do my best not to, but I'm so excited for Celebrate Recovery to be starting here. Um, I do have such uh, a heaviness for our community, for people um, to know the love of Jesus. That's the first thing that they need to feel when they walk through that door is the love of Jesus. And one of the men talked about um, feeling judged everywhere he went. And he was so, and another man felt like he was going to throw up because he was so afraid that people would judge him or that they would know everything about him. Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered recovery program. 
but it is for hurts, hang-ups, and have anybody been hurt in your life? Ever? We all have hurts. Could be childhood things. Could be could be divorce. Could be loss of a child. Could be in anything. All the things that we walk through, we've got hurts, hang-ups, things that keep us um, people-pleasing, that keep us stuck in relationships that we shouldn't be in, um, being a doormat, not knowing when to set boundaries, that kind of thing. Codependency is is something I've struggled with my whole life. I, I'm, I'm healing. I'm learning. I'm learning who God says that I am Amen. rather than letting everybody else tell me who I am. And that's that makes a whole, the, it makes a total difference in your life. So the thing is, what I want you all to hear is that this is a ministry of the church, not just for those people, right? We're all those people. We all got something. We all got something that hurts, that we don't know how to deal with, that we don't tell anybody about, that we struggle with, that we talk to God about all the time or don't. Any of y'all try to hide from God? Like if I just don't talk about it, he maybe he doesn't know, but he does. Right? Okay. Um, there are a few things. This, this is a, a ministry of the whole church. It's going to be on Sunday nights from 6 to 8. We'll meet. I just want you to know a little bit about it. I'll try not to talk too much. We're, we're going to meet, hopefully, probably on this side. We'll meet in here. Doors open at 530. We'll have refreshments so people can just come in and visit. One thing is having a safe place where you can just come and talk to people and have forever family is one thing that they say, say and tell their recovery all the time. Forever family. Doesn't matter what's going on. We'll come in here. We'll have a large group. People don't have to feel um, uh, put on the spot. We'll, and we'll have worship time. We'll go through the Christ-centered steps, the, the steps of recovery, recovery and the scriptures that go along with them. And then we'll, one week we'll have a testimony. The next week we'll have a lesson. And then we'll break up from that large group into a group of men and women. So people feel safe to share what they need to share, just with women and just with men. And we'll be separate confidentiality. You don't share what's been shared in group, that kind of thing. But it's a place where people can come to talk about what's gone on that week, what they're struggling with, what has defeated them, what they just don't know what to do about, and or... What has been brought up by the lesson we just listened to or the testimony that we heard? And it's a safe place. Just a few things that I jotted down is um, we want people to just feel the love of Jesus when they walk in. To know they're not going to be judged. doesn't matter what they've done, what's been done to them, what they're struggling with. And it is really a discipleship program. We're learning how to go to the Bible to find all those answers. They're all in there. And so the 12 steps in AA are amazing. But there's biblical, there's biblical foundation to all of those steps. And so we pair those together. And our higher power is Jesus. Amen. That's the only higher power. Sure. Um, it is giving hope to the hopeless. I've heard several testimonies about people that walked into their CR meeting suicidal sitting in their car trying to decide whether they were going to blow their brains out or they were going to go in that door. And thank God they walked in the door. There are people all around us that we could throw rocks at their house, they're so close, that don't know there is hope. And we know there's hope. And so for this to be a, a safe place, no, no need for hiding, and it's not just for addiction. We're not trying to fix anybody. We're trying to support. We're trying to hold out our arms wide and say, come on in here. We got the answer. It's Jesus and we love you. Amen. That's it. Amen. That's it. Um, and like the man said, try it for six weeks. And in a lot of times in CR they say, just keep coming back. Just keep coming back. The scripture never promises that we'll be fixed. In Philippians 1.6 it says that that I don't remember it exactly, but that I believe that he will continue. The one that started the good work in me will continue until that day in Christ Jesus, which means we, either he comes back or we die. So it's a continual process. We, we never fixed. None of us, and we said in Sunday school this morning, let him who thinks he stand be careful lest he fall. 
We, we, we all have things that God can still work on. So what we need you for is for prayer. All of you, I would count your prayers for all of us that are going to be involved and all of those that will come and all those that need to come. And then if you will look at that thing in your bulletin, we need, I would love for all of you to come Sunday night uh, in two weeks. Just to have smiling faces here that could say, hi, my name is whatever. I'm glad you're here. That's all you got to do. Just be greeters, be smiling faces, and love on people, and, and a smiling pe face for somebody to talk to. I went to a CR meeting at Love, Love and Truth in Jackson several months ago, and there was this girl just standing, you know, holding up the wall the way we do. It's the first time she'd ever been, scared to death. And, you know, I'm old enough to be her mama, but I just went over and said, hey, how are you doing? Well, she, as soon as somebody spoke to her, she just talked and talked and talked. So we could use some smiling faces. But there are all kinds of things on there that, that are opportunities for you to serve, to be involved. Praying, I wish you would all do all the time. Amen. Helping on the food team, being a greeter. Um, there are all kinds of things where you can help. Um, and then come. So, anything I forgot that... Yeah, so you'll see on that little card, there would be like a refreshment coordinator, somebody that would be the one that calls everybody. And then those that could provide refreshments, either either buy them or make them, you know, and be, be some of those people that we could call and say, you know, we could use some refreshments for this week or whatever, sign up, that kind of thing. Um, and then for people that could need a ride, there, are, there would be a possibility that somebody could want to come and not have a way to get here. So if there are any of you that just like to drive, and wouldn't mind going and getting somebody if they were not so far away, you know, and bring them to the meeting and take them home. That's a possibility. Anyway, we just really covet your prayers and are excited for what God's going to do. Test, test. There we go. Uh, I'm very excited to, to see this uh, chapter in um, the Celebrate Recovery, and uh, uh, thank you, Deanna, for sharing all of that uh, information. And um, As she had mentioned, um, the, the little flyer that's in the bulletin, I, I would greatly appreciate if everyone would at least uh, take the notion to try to get one of those bulletins and take it with you. Just look over it. Pray for Celebrate Recovery. But look over the back of it and to see if there's anything that God <coughs> may be speaking to you about in maybe assisting with this ministry. I so said the devil's happy for us to stand in here and, and show our little lights to, to one another. But God didn't indwell us with the Holy Spirit so that we could come in here and talk about the, how much Holy Spirit we have inside of us. It's in us to go out there and to share Jesus Christ with those who do not know him.